So for electric skateboards, we have a lot of different ways to power up boards. First, we got the belt drive system. It is very versatile and it has a lot of potential. And then we have the hub drives. They're a lot quieter. You can go quite inconspicuous with them. And then we got the gear drives. They're really efficient even compared to the belt drives. And you can put a lot of power through them. But there is a drive system that I think is often overlooked. It is called direct drive. I first saw the direct drive motors on the Ansara boards and then later on on the Phantom. Now our beloved Ace. The company that does very interesting stuff with their products has came out with exactly what I had in mind and possibly more. Welcome to the Acetec X3, definitely the most interesting skateboard of this year so far. The Acetec X3, it looks to be in the same form factor as the S1, but it is a lot longer and it has a different type of truck. So let's start off with the deck. The deck is made out of carbon fiber and the lines of it look very clean. And the carbon fiber, it is a very strong material. It is quite a bit lighter compared to other materials. And the surface finishes are going to look very good because you can see the woven carbon fiber and it's shiny and it's easy to clean. There's just a lot of advantages to it. And I think on this board, it has done very well. Acetec, after their attempt with the N1 is trying to do the split angle deck once again. So in the front is raised a little bit, in the back is tilted down a little bit. So if you're using the same angle truck, it is going to give you split angle turning characteristics. What that means is the rear truck is going to react a little bit less to your turning and the front truck is going to react a little bit more, which means the rear end is going to feel more stable and planted down and the front end is going to be a little bit more nimble. And because of this split angle design, there's gonna be a little quirk there you're gonna see about this board which is the back is slightly higher than the front because in the front is angled like this and the back is angled like that so it is going to slant forward or if you like racing car terms it is going to be called a rake but on electric skateboards we don't really have much of aerodynamics so it's not going to help you very much but it's just a thing that i observed about the concave ace deck really has all of their concave game down that on all of their boards it just feels so good it's a w-shaped concave so in the center it supports your foot arches and on the sides of flanges up so when you're turning you can really put the pressure on them and it's going to help you turn very well and because of the split angle there's like a natural foot stop on the deck as well so your feet are not going to overextend in the back or overextend in the front next up the trucks so this time ace deck has gone back to what they are doing best which is the tkp trucks their tkp trucks all i have to say is good things about them because so far we have not felt any speed wobbles or any indication of speed wobbles yet on them so so they're feeling very stable and very nimble and these trucks are all precision cnc'd so they are looking very clean and very sharp okay the edges aren't that sharp it's not gonna like cut your finger or anything but it looks very very cool i believe it uses the same design as it is on the x1 and the n1 i just gotta say it's the x trucks look very very good so because they're tkp trucks they're going to extend a little bit forward compared to rkp trucks but i think they're on about the same level of extension or less compared to a dkp trucks because those really reach out there next up is going to be the wheels so stock this board comes with 90 millimeter polyurethane wheels and they feel all right but we can do some slides on them pretty easily and because of the form factor of this board and let's just say on the sidewalk concrete sidewalks here we have in america i would imagine they you are going to feel those bumps so there are some trade-offs that you have to do with it we did manage to put on 97 millimeter rubber wheels on it and the vibrations and like cracks and all that feels a lot more mellowed out and uh, it didn't really impact performance that much and that's what i would recommend personally if you want to do with this board because with tkp trucks you're going to feel everything on the road and especially with a carbon fiber deck so i think getting a softer wheel or let's say like a rubber wheel or maybe like a bigger urethane wheel it is going to improve your ride quality a lot better and now we're finally going to talk about the motors so the motors that the x3 uses is 6370 motors and they're 70 kv so these are going to be a lot bigger than motors that you're going to find in the hub drive boards and because they're direct drive they're going to have less heating issues compared to hub drive boards so what direct drive pretty much is is that they attach the motor onto the truck and they're on the truck so they're not inside the wheel so it has the benefit better heat dissipation and also being able to use a lot of wheel options that you will want so let's first talk about the wheel options so with these direct drive motors once you take the wheels off you're going to see a plate 
on the motors and that is going to allow you to change between a kegel and a bag pulley and you are going to be able to use most of the wheels that are on the market right now aside from like at wheels because those are a little bit too big for this board anyways so that is definitely an upside of direct drive motors and that's one of the features that i really liked about it because recently we have uh, reviewed quite a bit of hub boards and on them you can't really change wheel options that easily and there's not that many options out there compared to like regular eastgate wheels so with the direct drive you can switch between any wheel you want i think that is very 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 nice and next up is the heat dissipation because these motors are on the outside uh, fresh air can like take the heat away and they're not going to heat up as much much as let's say uh, hub drive motors uh, these direct drive motors they do have an outer sleeving on them so that is going to affect heat dissipation slightly but not that much so riding on direct drive it is going to feel very weird to you because on hub boards usually the hubs are not that powerful but on direct drive you get the same sensation as you get on the hub board but it gets off the line very quick uh, with the belt driven motors it is going to be different than that because belts you are going to feel the torque like going on instantly and you're gonna hear the noises from it too but from direct drive there's like little to no noise and the torque comes on a little bit softer but it is definitely there. So I would describe the sensation differences. Let's just say like a uh, belt drive and gear drive. It is like a car with a manual transmission. You're gonna feel the torque instantly. The direct drive, it is feeling more like a CVT or like an automatic transmission because there's a torque converter. So it is going to come on a little bit softer, but it does not lack torque whatsoever. One of the main disadvantages of direct drive boards though, is that the outer sleeving does get scratched up quite easily because it is very close to the ground. You can always replace the sleeving once it gets too damaged or you just don't like the look of it getting danged up so you can replace that so it's not really a massive deal so if you're in a place like germany yeah i'm talking about germany again i think people will gravitate more towards hub boards because they look more inconspicuous than like bell boards bell boards are more louder so you might get polizza and people angry dog walking people direct drive board because it is so quiet i don't think you're gonna have that much of attraction on you unless you zoom past very fast and police are really on your ass that's another thing <laughs> that's whole other discussion for the esc a stack is using their 50 amp esc on this and it is a four-wheel drive board so you're going to have two ESCs one in the front one in the back and they are 50 amp ESCs which means they are very powerful okay I'm putting that out again it is a direct drive board it is four-wheel drive it has 50 amp ESCs so this board is not slow by any means it feels more like a belt board that doesn't have a lot of noise and the torque comes on a little bit softer at start for the battery ASTEC has put a massive 14s 3p battery inside of there it is a molly cell p42 ae pack in my opinion it's probably the best cell to use for electric skateboards at the moment and uh, it is very reliable it is very powerful i don't need to go over this again and it is 652 watt hours and for this board uh, the charge time is going to be three hours from flat to full so with this massive battery pack the charging time is actually not that bad or if you run out of battery completely you can also just push the board like a normal skateboard but it is going to be a heavy one but it is direct drive which means you're not going to have extra resistance like you do on a belt drive board or a gear drive board so the range on the x3 chase mason tooth parker got a range of 51 kilometers that is one kilometer longer than their stated one i don't know what he did and uh, he's a lighter guy he's a way lighter guy range may vary with you but for chase mason tooth parker it is 51 kilometers he also did a top speed test and it was 59 kilometers an hour yeah he didn't really pin it or maybe he did but that's the speed that we got and i would suggest anyone that going that speed you need to wear protective gear at least a helmet and like guards like pretty much everywhere if you're going that speed because if anything happens you're not in for a fun ride that is going to hurt so riding on this board like i said before the feeling is very peculiar it feels like you're riding on a belt drive or a gear drive board that has no sound that terrified me a little bit at first because with more powerful boards i'm used to them to have being like a sound at least but with this one there's like almost no sound at all so i'm like oh boy is this thing gonna keep going keep going am i gonna die what is going on what is going on <laughs> so yeah 
this is a board that is very different than anything we have ridden before and i would highly recommend like if you have a chance please try it out and in terms of comfort the original wheels they're not extremely comfortable if you have crappy roads so uh putting on rubber wheels on them it is going to feel a lot better polyurethane wheels usually they don't do well in wet so rubber wheels are going to help with that a lot and braking okay braking is something that i really have to talk about on this one so on hub bad boards i am used to them having like weak brakes it takes a little bit longer to brake to a full stop but on this one the sensation is unreal it feels like a bell drive board it does not feel like hub drive whatsoever you pull the brake all the way back you just stop there's no sound no nothing stops at first i was a little bit scared i'm like what stop just like that like you can be you can be going like 30 40 kilometers an hour you pull the brake to stop just, just yeah no sound like on bell drive boards and stuff if you pull the brake way too hard the wheel is going to lock up and you're gonna slide a little bit well you're sliding straight but you're gonna slide a little bit but on this one you're not going to break traction so it is going to slow down a lot quicker so that's something you really have to keep in mind about on this one it is nothing it's like nothing that i have ever tried before okay and the x3 this board is not small by any means and it's not light to carry by any means so if you're on this board it is a start to destination board most definitely and i actually wouldn't have it any other way because for a board this size and this weight i just want to ride from start to finish okay i don't want to pick it up whatsoever and it is going to do just that and it's going to do that brilliantly a stack with the x3 really blew it out of the water for me because it is the first time in my lifetime that i actually got my hands on on exactly what i wish for because i had this idea back in my mind for quite many years what if i just make a diy board that is four-wheel drive with direct drive that is going to feel interesting now isn't it and it definitely is it is a direct drive there's no noticeable drag on it and it just feels very weird at first but once you get used to it i couldn't get off of it <laughs> it just feels very interesting and a stack i don't know what these guys are on but <laughs> they keep on putting out stuff that is just very good very good very good okay-ish very good like they are not letting off on this because uh i guess it's in their name ace deck i really like this thing it is something that i have never tried before and uh, nobody else has done it before at least to my knowledge so far and it just feels so good the ace deck x3 it is a premium board most definitely so it is going to cost you a pretty penny the ace deck x3 i really like it i like how silent it is so like people don't just start looking at me like why is he so loud some of the bell drive boards you can hear it from like a block away so this one is really quiet you can ride in near silence and the braking is very reassuring it is going to stop not hesitating whatsoever so that's it for the a stack x3 if you want to get this board i'm going to leave a discount code in the description and if you really like this video please give me a like and subscribe it's kind of hot outside and i've been recording for like half an hour <laughs> i'm really sweaty so uh yeah ride safe and uh, if you have the chance definitely check out the a stack x3 this is a board that i can say you will not regret